Hello Indie fans, just a quick reminder before we start that it's April Fool's Day so do not believe everything that you read on the internet today, although I suppose that should be the default anyway, with this week kicking off a stacked month of April for indie games, beginning with Puffless Words, a self-styled, cozy, open-world survival sandbox builder with an ancient China setting. You're constructing your dream home, having to grow crops and also defend the base from bandits and can venture out into the open world to explore and fight and looks like a very promising entry. Alright, full disclosure here, this game got on my radar primarily due to Markiplier who covered an earlier version of Buckshot Roulette a few months ago and would have otherwise not been my kind of game. But you are essentially playing Russian Roulette with a shotgun but have special items to sway things in your favour. New in the Steam release are more items which have special effects like allowing you to peek at the next shell or to stop the dealer from taking their next turn and should be pretty neat. This one's for indie game developers. The free indie game marketing resources are ready so sign up via the link in the description below to get it in your mailbox. A little bit of a controversial one here since developer and publisher gdevs.com has a reputation of creating Steam pages for games and then waiting to see which gets more wishlists before focusing their development efforts on them, with one such beneficiary of that tactic being Monsters Domain, with a Steam page being created in October 2020 so that's 3 plus years and counting. This is a first person action title in which you play as the monsters, killing and looting the corpses of adventurers where you start off playing as lowly skeletons but can eventually get to control dragons and more. Each slain hero increases the power of the monsters with meta progression systems to keep you levelling up so to speak in various areas and looks like another take on Dungeon Keeper so let's see if their strategy pays off. A game from an unexpected source is Saviorless since this is made by a team out of Cuba, not a country that you would traditionally associate with indie games and I have to say, at least based on first impressions, this is pretty impressive work. It is an action puzzle platformer in which you are exploring the smiling islands playing as a child who wants to become a saviour with the masked avatar version of this character having more combat heavy gameplay as compared to the regular version. There's also a third playable character so it's kind of a lot so let's see how everything fits together in this game. We also have the release of Biomorph, a shape-shifting metroidvania that seems to have some Hollow Knight DNA, in which the gimmick is that our hero can transform into the enemies that it kills. It has been described as Hollow Knight meets Kirby as shorthand, where each enemy has special abilities that you can use in combat and exploration as an interesting alternative to traditional metroidvania style progression. It looks quite pretty as well, with the demo being well received and should be one of the better metroidvanias of the year. Other games begin with Dungeon Renovation Simulator, a title which is an example of what is old is new again since this title, down to the mop that you are using, is certainly reminiscent of Viscera cleanup detail from 2015 only fantasy instead of sci-fi and has you playing as a lowly goblin cleaner clearing up the dungeon and has the same appeal as something like Power Wash Simulator.
speed ahead! After more than a year, the Sonic like action platformer Freedom Planet 2 comes to consoles, so if you love Gotta Go Fast action, be sure to pick it up. Super Dog is on the case! I'm ready for anything. Here's a weird one in Frog Monster, a voxel first-person shooter with metroidvania elements in which you are exploring an interconnected world filled with bugs and beasts, looking interesting and very unique. Kitchen Crisis is a roguelite tower defense game but with a cooking theme in which you are creating recipes and placing down kitchen appliances to feed aliens, choosing between three upgrades roguelite style and comes to us from the developer of Team Fight Manager which is an eSports simulation auto battler released in 2021 which is very successful making this the hidden gem of the week. Here's an awesome looking low poly title named Of Life and Land, a settlement building strategy game with a cozy vibe in which plants and animals need to be cared for as well and looks also very wholesome. A neat looking puzzle strategy game is Planet Tiles which is about placing tiles on planets with a wonderful look and hopefully an interesting scoring system.
If you thought rage games like Jump King weren't hard enough, how about To The Flame, a game in which you play as a moth that cannot fly, instead having to jump up the level in order to meet God, with unique features being the double jump and almost Hollow Knight vibe to the art style without being a straight copy, and of course, a giant spider that will kill you as an added bonus. I cannot remember covering this title since apparently Turbo Golf Racing released in early access in 2022 and is releasing out of it this week, essentially being Racing Rocket League which is weird and so indie games. Here's a strange one since Y2K Nameless Psychosis is the free demo to Y2K IV or maybe 4? A free update to a game from 2019 where apparently the developers have been working on this update all this time but the game was notorious for having a very unlikable protagonist but I suppose that might be the point with the interesting visuals making a return. That just won't seem to die. Do you know what the Y2K bug was? Or should I say is? It's a reset. A return to an earlier date. A loss of save data. Nostalgia for something long lost has stopped the innovation. Many programmers were hired to fix this bug. I I'm the first filmmaker. Come on, little elbow grease never hurt nobody. You never washed a dish before? <laughs> oh, honey, don't worry. We'll start the movie soon. Hurry the fuck up! See you at the premiere. Wear something nice. Love indie games? Sign up to my newsletter to get a weekly dose of what's hot, along with some news and of course, weekly game giveaways. So if interested, link is in the description below. It's a good month of games with the top 5 having plenty of meat on the bones. So let's begin with From Glory to Goo, a survival real-time strategy title in the vein of games like They Are Billions, only sci-fi with aliens instead of against zombies. There's some factory building automation type of base building as well since you're constructing your economy and defenses against the shape-shifting alien swarm known as the Gru and given how awesome They Are Billions is, this game definitely has potential.
another long in development title makes it to release, in which I have covered Quit Today multiple times when talking about beat em ups or 2D brawlers, in which it's a combo focused side scrolling action game in which you are attempting to tender your resignation from a toxic workplace. However, jealous and suspicious colleagues will get in your way to prevent you from quitting as will the supervisors that are strangely literal office drones to get to work smacking them around with your briefcase in order to escape. This is supposed to be a roguelite, so I assume there's some elements of procedural generation of enemies encountered as well as the perks chosen, having an amazing art style and animation, so I'm all in on this. My name is Thorold Olufsen, and I am looking for my wife, Rhea. Their trail led me to you. Add one more long in development title to the list of releases in Sons of Valhalla, an action base builder title that combines side scrolling action with a base building aspect. You play as a Viking warrior that finds himself in England searching for his captured wife, having to build up his forces and to go on raids in order to get to her. It kind of looks like Kingdom, but appears to be not just confined to one location in which you are constructing fortresses and building siege weapons and then going out to raid, but if you fall in combat, Odin will come to your aid, adding a mystical twist to the action. The pixel art and lighting in this is gorgeous and is one of the most anticipated games on Steam for good reasons. Surprise, here's a pick that you might not have seen coming in Hydronir Journey to Vocalidus, a paid DLC to a massively popular sandbox automation title that sees you in a new land across the sea, having to harness a living volcano in order to power new machinery. This has the compelling gameplay loop of games like Factorio but is in first person with this new play area impressively being 6 times as large as the original island, so here's hoping that it is filled with interesting stuff. And given how the developer has been supporting this game post launch, I'm sure that this will be a worthy addition. Bullet Hell Action Adventure Metroidvania shows the combination of genres and ideas that Mini Shoot Adventures is pulling from, one that takes the backtracking and traversal ability unlocks into the top down view along with intense bullet hell action against both masses of enemies and giant bosses and could really be something special. For more 2D Zelda style titles, watch this video for 40 upcoming games.